church service tonight. We are off the hook tonight. We're going to be worshiping and we're going to be rocking it out here tonight. We have a special worship team here tonight as we celebrate our 24th anniversary. We have exciting things to talk about. Yes, amen, amen. God is so good and we're so excited about what's going to take place here. Let me just give you a little bit of instruction because we don't have the children's service tonight, the, there's a, for you moms, look back there, you see the two mirrors? That room behind those mirrors is a, is normally our family room. Tonight, it's just a room where, for fussing babies, but we've also got this out in the lobby cranked up, so if you need to let your kids be a little rambunctious, go out to the lobby and let them run, and you won't miss anything. You can still watch the, the, the stream out there and hear it. If you need to nurse, and this is for you guys to understand, the nursery is a safe place for you to nurse. So men, you have no business going towards the nursery and the children's ministry. That's for mamas to go there and nurse their babies. So mamas, if you don't know where the nursery is, there will be somebody that can direct you out there and you can feel free to go nurse in there. And the live stream will also be broadcast in there so you won't miss it while you're nursing. So don't starve your baby to not miss anything tonight. It's okay to go nurse. You won't miss anything. Now, if your kids are acting up, please take them out to the lobby. Don't yell at them. They're just kids and they can't help it. They do kid things. But if they're acting up, take them out to the lobby so they don't distract the 20 people around you that get distracted, okay? So, and, and if you don't take them out, the ushers will come give you the look, you know, like. And, and that just means, oh, I better take my kids out to the lobby. So uh, it's not, it doesn't reflect on your parenting. It just means we notice. We know you don't always hear your kids. So because uh, we have a, like a thing that grows in our brains that blocks them out. And it, it's part of sur per parent survival, right? So, hey, without further ado, we need to worship the Lord. And I want to introduce our worship team tonight because we have a very special crew here. Uh, we'll start over here with Rachel. I've already told Rachel that if her parents disown her, I will adopt her any day of the week. Oh, it was out of stand in line, huh? Okay, Rachel, you are very loved. And then Elvia, who has been one of my favorite female vocalists forever. And then Jacob, your youth pastor over here on the keys. And then over here you have my special son, Justice, from Nashville. He's not special in that way, like you're special. He really is special. He's a very gifted young man. And then over here you got David Johnson on electric. David's one of those guitarists that's been here since the early days and, and it has always been a blessing. Back there on drums, you got Gilbert. It's funny watching Gilbert grow up. I used to call him Junior, 
Now the only people that call him Junior are his family because he can't make them stop. But he said to me one day, I'm not Junior anymore, I'm Gilbert. I'm like, wow, he just grew up. So, <laughs> And then over here we got Sam Butera on the bass. I've already told Sam if he needs somebody to adopt his kids, I will gladly take them any day of the week. But, see, and I've got one. Gianna will take me up on it any day of the week. So Sam, send her on over. We'll keep her. <laughs> and then we've got my precious daughter, Victoria. All the way from Bakersfield. And then we've got Elvia's ex very special daughter, Miranda. So let's pray and let's worship the Lord. And by the way, uh, we're waiting for Connor Henderson to get here. Uh, his flight got delayed on the way here. And so we don't know if he'll make it at all, but pray for Connor and we'll pray for him right now. By the way, we are pretty full tonight. So I'm going to ask you to do something. If there are empty seats on your row, would you move one direction or the other so all the empty seats on your row are together so that anybody coming in can still get a seat? What's that? No, it's not the Calvary Shuffle, because the Calvary Shuffle, they make you give up the end row. And I don't, I think if you came early, you deserve the end row, right? Yes. So let the late people get the middle. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We so look forward to what you're going to do. Lord, pour out your spirit in this place. Anoint this place. Lord, we pray for those who don't know you that tonight they would recognize your incredible love in this place, your incredible power in this place, your loving nearness to us in this place. And Lord, they would recognize their need for a Savior and put their trust in your Son. Have your way in this place. Pour out your Spirit on this worship team. And Lord, lead us as we worship you, as we're heading into your throne room right now. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
grateful in here tonight? Woo! All right, we're going to sing this one together. I thank God. We can clap. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this new soul, this bag of bones. on my mind But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone You picked me Because you healed my heart, you changed my day, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Y'all sound beautiful. I deny what I see, got no choice but to believe. Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can just keep on moving Nah, you ain't welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold Sing of how you save my soul Because you heal my heart, you change my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Oh. All right, this next part, we're going to sing it out because Jesus is risen from the grave, so can we. I am free. 
Because you healed my heart, you changed my day Forever free, I'm not the same I thank the Master, I thank the Savior I thank God Woo! Ow, ow! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Please have a seat, have a seat. I want to talk to you for a minute about, well, I want to share some stuff with you. And, and I want to celebrate our anniversary by just telling you a little bit about the past so that you might understand a little bit about the future and, uh, you know, and, and kind of where we're going. 24 years. 24 years. It was May of 1998 when my pastor, who nine years ago today went to be with the Lord, uh, my pastor asked me to go and cover the pulpit at a church where the pastor had resigned while they found a new pastor. And they had actually made a board decision that they were going to bring in guest pastors while they found their new pastor, but they had resolved they were not going to hire the guest pastor. They were going to find their pastor from somewhere else. But after five weeks, they decided I was supposed to be their pastor. And on August 2nd, 1998, we made it official. And I became the pastor of Calvary Chapel, Lone Mountain. Yeah, amen. I actually didn't want to be the pastor of that group. Really, I wanted to start my own church, and, and I wanted to start it from the ground up and, and build it with my own leadership team, my own people, and, and, and this group of Christians, this group of beautiful saints, they were a mess. They had, they had all kinds of baggage, and, and, and I laughed about about, you know, the thought of being their pastor. And, and, and I was driving home after the third Sunday and laughing with Kathy and saying, they really want me to be their pastor. I'm like, I don't want to be their pastor. And, and Kathy's laughing with me. And then she stopped and she said, yeah, but God keeps showing me that they pray and they're full of love and he can do anything with that. And I went, ugh, <laughs> Debbie Downer. Now I can't laugh about it. Now I actually have to pray about it. And, and, and God quickly showed me that, that he was in this and he was behind this group of people and that, that the reason they were there was for me to come pastor them and to, to, to grow this church. And, and he has done amazing things with this group because they prayed and they were full of love. You know, three things that, that marked this group of saints was they had a passion for God's word. They were full of love. And they were full of zeal. They just had energy. And, and they made things happen like you wouldn't believe. I mean, even to the point when I first took over, I had a dear friend who was a missionary in Thailand. And, and he was in Vegas trying to get some things together. And somebody had donated to him all kinds of equipment and stuff for his office in Chiang Mai. And he had to get it on a, in, into crates on a ship. And, and so he got these two huge crates full of stuff ready to ship to Thailand. And, and they weighed about 500 pounds each. And he called me and he said, hey, Jimmy, I've got these two crates. I've got to get them on a truck to get them to the ship in L.A. And can you get me some people to help? And I called the church, the people at the church. I told him, oh, yeah, sure. And I called the people at the church, and not one guy was available, but five ladies <laughs> said, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> and listen, they did. They did it. Those five ladies got together, and we got two 500-pound crates into the truck so that they could haul it away. And that's when I realized this is a church that won't quit. These people can do anything anything. You know, there, there's a biblical precedent for 
the things that mark our church. Fervent in love, fervent in the word, fervent in spirit. Those are, those are all biblical. You know, when it comes to fervent in word, that's one of the things that's always marked this church, a fervency to dig into the scriptures. The psalmist says in Psalm 119.48, my hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I'll meditate on your statutes. And I've always believed that the greatest way to grow into Christ's likeness is to grow in his word. To, to, I mean, if you look at, at what made Jesus, it was the Word. And, and if you want to be like Jesus, you've got to be like the Word of God. And, and, and so we have always done something that, that blows people away. We study the Bible like very few churches in this country. I had a friend visit who has been a Calvary Chapel pastor for some 30 years. And, and he was looking at how we do church, and, and I was telling him that we do, you know, one message on Sunday mornings and a different book of the Bible on Sunday night. And, and then we do on Wednesday night a different, a third book of the Bible. And plus we do, you know, midweek Bible studies and, and we do men's Bible studies and ladies Bible studies. And he goes, he goes, you do all that every week? And I said, yeah, for 24 years. And he, and he said, he said, that's not normal, Jimmy. He said, you should pray about maybe not doing so many services and I said, why? I love it. It's been, it's been a blast, and, and it's what we do, and, and it really marks us, but it is not normal. And I was actually surprised that most churches don't do this. I was looking around going, wow, this is different. Most churches don't do what we do. We are fervent in the Word. And I believe that it's our fervency in the Word that leads to another area where we're fervent, and that is we're fervent in love. Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 8, above all things, have fervent love for one another. And not only did Kathy and I see that love in the original crew when we first met here 24 years ago in that school, but that's been the thing that has marked us as a church from the beginning. We've always been that church that when people visit, they're shocked that there's so much love in a church in Las Vegas. They always go, wow, this church is just so loving. And, and, and how many people have come here and given their lives to the Lord because they felt the love of the Lord in this place? Hey, raise your hands if that's you, right? Look around you. I mean, how many people have come and just said, man, this is the love of the Lord. Amen, amen. <laughs> it's a characteristic that, that has set us apart. And, and listen, you guys have been loving to many people that were, by all standards of the world, unlovable. And you have loved them and loved them and loved them. And we have people that are here because you kept loving them even when nobody else did. And some of you guys tag team and loved on people and just kept on loving on them until they turned it around and turned to the Lord. And that has just been a mark of this church. That word fervent in 1 Peter 4, 8 means stretched or strenuous. And you guys have stretched to love people through thick and thin. And that the love in this place isn't like the world loves. You guys have loved only like God loves with that agape, unconditional love for one another. And I think, you know, one of the ways that your love has shined over the years has been in your willingness to love on people you don't even know. That has blown me away. A few months ago, I remember when my, my dear sister in the Philippines, Atekoli, who was our cook for many years at the Bible College, was dying of cancer. And, and at the same time as she was dying of cancer, that typhoon that swept through the Philippines flattened her house. And I told you guys about it, and you guys literally came up with enough money to not only rebuild their house, but to pay all her hospital bills and to care for her kids who were trying to finish college. You guys so blessed this family, a woman you have never met and will never meet, and yet you guys loved on her like she was your family. And that is agape love. When my dear brother, Pastor Yuli, was dying of COVID, Yuli, Yuli was our, our uh, director of, uh, dean of students at the Bible College for many years. He retired from that a few years ago, and he started pastoring his church full time. 
He got COVID and he was, he, he was actually having to lay on his face to be able to breathe. And, and he was right on the edge of death. And, and, and the hospital bills were overwhelming them to the tune of thousands upon thousands of dollars. And you guys who never met this guy ever in your life stepped up and paid all of their bills in full. And they were able, not only have they been able to get out of the hospital, Yuli was at the pastor's conference this last week in Dumaguete. Yeah, amen. The doctor gave him three to four years to live. And I said, Yuli, the doctors don't know our God like we know our God. And, and, and you're going to be okay. You got 30 to 40 years, if God wills, and nothing's going to take you home early. Not only that, but some of you actually stepped up. They lost their church building because it's being sold, the building they rent. Some of you stepped up to help them buy land and build a new church. And, and it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, talk about a church that loves. Then... Every year, Ron Brink, our missionary in Mexico, he asked us to send shoeboxes down there for kids. You have no idea who they are or will ever meet. And every year, Chuck drives down there with a trailer full of shoeboxes to bless these, these kids with. You go shopping for people you don't even know so that they can know the love of Christ through your love. And that means we are fervent in love. And because of your fervency in love, we've also been fervent in spirit. Romans 12, 11, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That word fervent actually means to be hot. And this is a hot church. <laughs> you guys, yeah, right? You guys fall behind in no service to the Lord. When it comes to getting involved in ministry, you have never held back. I can't tell you how many people call this church saying, hey, pastor, we're trying to do this thing and no other churches will get involved or help us. Can you guys help? And without even asking, I always say, oh yeah, we can help. And you guys never let me down. Every time somebody has asked me, hey, can you guys step up and help? You guys have jumped on the opportunity and have been fervent in spirit to serve. While most of the country was cowering during COVID, we opened the doors. And many of you came. You know why? Because you aren't going to sit around and let some little virus keep you from ministering the love of the Lord to others. And you became a place that people could come and worship. You became a place where people could come and feel loved. And people could come and have their needs met. When the world was falling apart, you rose up. You, my friends, are fervent in spirit. And we have a fervency when it comes to in spirit, when it comes to missions, I don't know how many churches our size have active multiple missions programs on multiple continents, but we do. We've got, we've got ministry. We've got a church planter in Mexico who is good for at least about a dozen churches he's planted that you guys are involved with in every, every way. We have a Bible college in the Philippines that is responsible for planting churches all over Asia. We have planted churches in Indonesia, in Thailand, in South Korea, in China, and where else? Man, everywhere, all over Asia, in places where, where Americans are not necessarily welcome, Filipinos are embraced. And they come to the Bible college and they get discipled and they go out. Not only that, but in the Philippines, we just had this pastor's conference. And of the 70 pastors or so that were there, I think 34 of the Calvary chapels or 36 of the Calvary chapels in the Philippines are Bible college graduates. Guys, you have made an impact. Amen. Talk about being fervent in, in missions. So let me say that we are and always have been a church that is fervent 
in word, in spirit, and love. Over the last couple of years, we have felt a growing sense that these attributes of our nature, these characteristics of this church, need to be communicated more clearly to the world. This is something that we feel we, people need to know about because what good is it to be fervent if nobody knows you're fervent, right? There are so many people out there who desperately need what we have. And every week I, I meet people who find us for the first time and go, I didn't know you were here. And I have to say, we've been here for 24 years. <laughs> but they don't know that we're here and we've got to do a better job of communicating that to the world. For many people, they see us every day, but to them, we're just another church in Las Vegas, and there's many of them, and there's nothing that really distinguishes us from every other church out there. And let me say that even the name Lone Mountain, while it means much to you who know us, most people in Las Vegas don't even know that, Las, that Lone Mountain is a township in the city of Las Vegas. They think it's a street, and they wonder why we're, our building's not located on it. When I ever tell, whenever I tell people I pastor Calvary Chapel at Lone Mountain, they go, oh, do you mean that church over there on Jones and Lone Mountain? Uh, no, that's Canyon Ridge. You know, but, but they, don't, they don't realize that Lone Mountain is, is a township. Most people don't even realize it's a mountain. You know, and, and, and so, you know, the name Calvary Chapel Lone Mountain doesn't tell people a lot. In fact, whenever I give people my email address, they, they always read it back to me. Oh, Jay Morales at Sea Clone Mountain? No, CC Lone Mountain. And now I just go, yeah, that one. Yeah, I, I just gave up on, on trying to, to explain it to anybody. But that being said, we recognize that it's time for a refreshing and a rebranding that is representative of who we are. Jesus called us to make disciples in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Our Jerusalem is Las Vegas, and by itself it is too much for any one church to handle effectively. This takes Holy Spirit power and fervency. We're going to be a church that impacts the world. We have got to be a church that is fervent in the world. If we're going to be a church that impacts the world, we have got to be a church that's fervent in spirit. If we're going to be a church that impacts the world, we have got to be a church that is overflowing with love. There's not been a time in our lifetime when the world has so desperately needed a church with these qualities. They need Jesus, and they need a church with the passion to bring him to them. The church is God's answer to man's plight the salt of the earth and the light of the world that he left here to represent him. In these last days, the world needs a church that is fervent.
Let me say first, before I know some of you are like, oh no, we're not Calvary Chapel. We are still Calvary Chapel. I believe that we are more Calvary Chapel than most Calvary Chapels out there. The Calvary distinctives are in our DNA. We're not leaving Calvary Chapel. We're simply renaming the church to line up more with our personality and make it more easier to say. <laughs> I believe God is doing an amazing work through us, and we need a name that lines up with that. So we want to celebrate what God is doing by worshiping the Lord. So while you're on the, your feet, let's worship the Lord. Let's party. Oh, happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed, 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 he washed my sins away.
24 years ago, I made a commitment to the Lord that I would never gather a group of people that I didn't know everybody in the room was saved without giving them a chance to put their trust in Jesus. But let's have a seat real quick and let's, let me talk some kingdom business with you for a second. Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for our sins because there was no way we could save ourselves. We were separated from God by our sins and God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He made a way where there was no way for you and I to spend eternity with him. That's why we do what we do. That's why we're fervent. Because we desire, and we believe it's the Spirit laying that on our hearts, we desire that none should perish. We desire that all should come to that knowledge of everlasting life in Jesus Christ. It's God's desire that you should be saved. And if you have never put your trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we'd be wasting your time if I didn't give you a chance to do something about that right here and now. But let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the things you're doing in this room, Lord, as your spirit moves across this room. And Lord, I pray for those who have never put their trust in your son. Grant them eternal life, forgiveness of sins, as they put their trust in Jesus. As you remain in that attitude of prayer with your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you've never put your trust in Jesus, the simple question is this. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that he paid a price that you could never pay? And do you believe he rose again from the dead and made a way for you to have eternal life? If, if you believe these things, the Bible says all that's left for you to do is receive it. Put your trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. Invite him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. And if that's something you want to do, I want to lead you in a simple prayer to do that right now. I'm going to pray a prayer to invite Jesus into your life. And as I pray this prayer, you just repeat it after me. Make it your prayer because I believe it's true. And I'll pray slowly so you can follow along. But pray this prayer to the Lord right now as you invite him into your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you paid a price that I could never pay. And I believe that because you were without sin, that the grave couldn't hold you. And you rose again from the dead. And you made a way for me to spend eternity with you. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me, for I am a sinner. Cleanse my heart. Make me new. Lord Jesus, I put my trust in you this day. And I thank you for what you've done. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, I would love to be able to pray for you. All the heads are still bowed. All the eyes are still closed. If you prayed that prayer, would you let me pray for you by just raising your hand right there in your seat? Let's bring a little bit of light in the house so I can see any hands that come up. And if you put your trust in Jesus, would you wait till the, light, wait till the lights come up here real quick and let me, give me some, yeah, low light, low light. There we go. And then if you just prayed that prayer, would you raise your hand so I can see you? Just let me pray for you right where you're sitting. God bless you right there in the middle. I see you. Anybody else? Can I pray for you? God bless you over here. Anybody else? Can I pray for you? God bless you. I see you there, young lady. God bless you. I see you there in the back there, guys. I see you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you over here. Anybody else? Can I pray for you tonight? God bless you over here in the back. I see you. Anybody else? Listen, if the Spirit is stirring your heart right now, if right now you're feeling like, I need to raise my hand, then do it. Don't be afraid. Over here somewhere, somebody, God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless you over here in the side, guys. I see you. Anybody else? Hey, if you're watching online, hey, God bless you back there. I see your hand back there. It's so exciting to see what God's doing. God bless you over there on the side. I see you guys. Yeah, I see your hands. I'm excited for you. That's so awesome. My kids got saved at a young age too, and they're up here on the stage now. They've been walking with the Lord since they were little kids, and it was something like this, that 
that they put their trust in Jesus and have never looked back. God bless you, and God bless you, young lady. God bless you, young man. I see you. Anybody else? Just raise your hand and let me see you. Let me know. That was me, Pastor. If you're watching online, listen, we think the world of you too. You're part of our family. And, and we want to know that you raised your hand or that you prayed this prayer. So would you click on the link next to the live stream and let us know. And we'll commit not only to pray for you this week, but we want you to send you a little booklet about this decision you just made that will help you grow as a Christian. It will explain to you what God's doing in your life. And I think you'll really be blessed by it. And no strings attached. We just want to be a, a helper of your joy. Well, Father, I thank you for these who have prayed this prayer tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would be so glorified in them, that you would minister in power in, in their hearts. And, and, and Lord, that, that you would pour out your spirit upon them in power right now, Lord. Baptize them in your Holy Spirit. Lord, give them those good gifts that you have for them, for the building of your kingdom. And, and, and Father, I pray that, that you would cause them to recognize your incredible love for them. And, and Lord, that they would fall madly in love with you as they recognize it. Father, draw many to yourself through them as you use them for your glory. And Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Yeah, amen. I've been fighting back tears all night long. And I just tears of joy at what God's doing in this church and what God's doing in your lives. And, and that really, uh, really blessed me. Now, I'm going to show you guys our new website that we're re releasing at the same time. Yeah, very exciting. As I do that, uh, we're also going to be implementing, starting next week, new visitor bags so that when people come for the first time, they receive a little bag that tells them about the church and, and gives them a, a free coffee coupon and, and all kinds of little things to just uh, make them feel loved and welcomed. And so the elders are going to be passing out the bags so that you have one and you can, uh, you can tell, show people uh, what it is. You'll know what people are getting when they come. And not only are you getting the visitor bag, but some of you in your bag you have a little red raffle coupon. If you have a little red raffle coupon, you just want a fervent shirt. So that's right. Yeah, exactly. It's like Willy Wonka's golden ticket, only better. So, you know, so, so if you got the red ticket, all you have to do is take it to the hub when we dismiss, and you can collect your T-shirt there. And for the rest of you, if you didn't get a ticket, you still win because you get to buy one of these. And so uh, they'll be available in the hub, and you can pick them up there. And uh, we've got all kinds of really cool merch for you. We, wanna, uh, we want you, we want to equip you. Listen, guys, stop the chatting, chatty Cathy's. So, <laughs> we listen we want to equip you with all the tools you need to tell people about your church and so pick up the t-shirts pick up the you got the ticket Woo! congratulations awesome there's a couple more of them out there i don't know how many of them but uh, if you get one hey god bless you we're glad for you now let me show you the web page and then uh let me see. Can we get this on me up here? Is it on me already? Okay, awesome. Let's see if my fingerprint works. Man, my computer keeps trying to shut down. I don't know why. Okay, listen. Yes, the demon is in it. Here we go. All right. So listen, when you go to the website, you can still get there by going to ccloanmountain.org. But now we're, we have a new address. It's ferventlv.org ferventlv.org. Now, if you type ferventlv.com, it'll still take you there. If you type ccloanmountain.org, it'll still take you there. But ferventlv.org is our new web page. And let me put this up on the screen for you. It's, it's under construction. Well, man, it's not even loading right. Hang on. It's brand new and it's under construction. Ta-da! There it is. Yay! Awesome. So, so this is what it looks like. When you come to the webpage, you'll see a menu across the top. 
and you can find people that are visiting us can find out more about us by clicking on about us and and they'll have all kinds of resources there like service times and our our statement of faith and and stuff about the staff here and then if you go to the resources page it, it'll have all kinds of sermon archives by the way this is where you can find your spiritual gifts test just click on the resources tab and and we'll have we're, we're about to release a new podcast that's going to be on this page as well and yeah it's exciting and then you can find sermons you can find your enrollment for right now media here and you can find your religious exemption letters your bible reading plan and your spiritual gift test there and then by the way on the main page you've got three buttons watch pray and visit. That should cover the main reasons you would want to come to the web page. And so all of those buttons will help. Also, as you scroll down, there's all kinds of useful tools. Now, like I said, it's still being finalized. This is brand new, hot off the press. And there are some things that are not completed yet. There are some things that are still uh, buggy. And so I'm going to ask you, it works for the basics right now. And I'm going to ask you to please feel free to use it. But don't complain until next week. Okay? Give us a week to work the bugs out. But then listen, listen, here's the problem. You guys have this tendency when things don't work right to just be quiet about it and go, oh, well, I better just shut up. We want to hear if it doesn't work right. So you are our proof testers, proof checkers, editors. So as of next week, whatever doesn't work right, Go ahead and contact us on the web page. How do you contact us? Go down to the bottom of the page and click on contact us. And that link is not working right now because we don't want to hear from you. No, just kidding. It just doesn't work. But it will work by next week. And you can click on contact us if you find anything buggy and let us know that it's buggy so that we can make this thing the ultimate web page for anybody that is looking to be ministered to at Fervent. Amen? Amen. So very, very exciting news. Now, uh, I asked for a t-shirt launcher and they wouldn't let me have one. So now you do have to buy your t-shirts in the, uh, in the uh, hub. And uh, so I encourage you to make sure and pick up your merch. But right now, it's taco time. Right? Amen. So let's stand up and let's pray for our food. And then the worship team is going to, is Connor here? Where's Connor? Connor, Connor, Connor. Where is he? Get Connor, out here, Connor. 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 You made it. Well, don't you have a song you're going to worship in? Yes, so. Okay. Does he have a mic? Where's his stuff? Here, over here. Come on, Connor. Connor all set up. Connor's going to lead us in worship in this next song, and then we're going to go get tacos, and, and the worship team's going to keep playing because they said, hey, we flew from all over the country. We're not going to stop just because they're done. So if you want to worship, worship, but, but we're going to head out to tacos out the back. No, out the front. They brought the tacos in here, right, Lisa? Right. So out the doors, and they're going to have all kinds of tacos, three flavors. We got beef, no, chicken, beef. Three rooms. Okay. So somebody will direct them? Oh, okay. So there's three rooms where you can get food at. There'll be people to direct you to the three rooms where you can get food at. And the lines will move fast if you just follow their instructions. So uh, I'm not even going to pretend to try to explain it because I don't even know how it works. But, but they've got a system. Just follow their instructions and we'll get all our food and we can hang out together. It's beautiful out there right now, isn't it? Or is it raining? Is it beautiful? Rain is beautiful. So we can hang out out back and we can worship the Lord after you get your food. The doors will be open and we can go back there and fellowship with one another. But let's pray for our food and then Connor, you can lead us in worship. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We're so excited about the things you're doing in our midst. And Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in us as we fervently serve you, Lord. May we bring you glory and be pleasing to your name. Lord, be blessed by the things that take place here tonight and forevermore, Lord, until the day you call us home. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship team. Let's do it.
you walk in we you're gonna be all right. If you walked in down, you're gonna walk out up. If you walked in empty, he's gonna fill your cup. It's just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything can change. If you walked in broken, you're gonna walk. He's gonna save your soul. He's just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything can change. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Just a mention of his name. Everything can change. praising Jesus in here, amen? Can we give him a shout of praise? Come on. If you walked in sick, you're gonna walk out here. If you walked in down, I know you're gonna walk out here. If you walked in heaven, you're gonna walk out light. If you walked in we you're gonna be all right. If you walked in town, you're gonna walk out of. If you walked in empty, he's gonna fill your cup. If you walked in broken, you're gonna walk.